Hey, good morning everyone. So today we're going to continue our lecture for Earth and Life Science, Earth Subsystem. Okay. So from our previous study, we've known Earth or our planet is a dynamic and each part of Earth consists of air, land, water, and light. So all of those are interconnected and continuously interact within each other. So the interaction of the dynamic parts of our planet make up the subsystem. So we have four subsystems, namely geosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, and biosphere. So let's discuss the first uh, subsystem of Earth which is the geosphere, okay? So geosphere came from two Greek words. So we have the geo means the ground and then sphere. So it pertains to the shape of the earth. So geosphere includes all of soil, rocks, and mineral present in the crust to up, uh, up until to the core of the earth. So commonly we know Geosphere or uh, the earth is divided into three layers. So, namely crust, mantle, and core. Okay? So, it is the uh, it is the portion that includes the interior structures of rocks and mineral. So, all of the physical processes on the land that shape the earth's surfaces. So, in addition, geosphere uh, covers all of the solid part of the Earth surfaces. So here are the detailed layers of Earth, uh, included the discontinuity line. So we have the crust. Okay, so crust has the uh, lithosphere, and lithosphere is divided into oceanic and continental crust. We have the mantle. So mantle is also divided into two the upper and lower mantle, and then we have the core. So core uh, consists of outer and inner core. In every layer of our uh, earth, there is a uh, discontinuity line that separates separates each layer. So we have conorod discontinuity. It is between the upper and lower crust. We have the Mohorovicic discontinuity. Uh, it can be found between lower, lower and lower crust and upper mantle. Repeti discontinuity. Uh, it can be found in the between upper and lower mantle. We have Gutenberg discontinuity. Uh, it is a line between lower mantle and outer core, and then the Lehmann discontinuity. It runs between the outer and inner core. So those are the mo more detailed uh, layers of the earth. So it is not just divided into three, no? Uh, uh, those three are the major, okay? So we all know that the crust is the, the thin layer, or it is described as the thin layer uh, of the earth, and then mantle is the thickest, and then the core are uh, the part were in said to be the center of the earth. <clears throat> okay, so this uh, page of our PPT shows the different layers of our earth. Okay, so it depicts the three layers of earth. So how can or how did we discover that the earth has several layers and discontinuity line. And that is because of the seismic wave. So every layers of earth has, or they vary in density, mineral composition, temperature, and thickness, even though uh, we still didn't uh, reach at the very bottom or center of the earth. But the modern technology allows us to identify and study the material of our interior, uh, interior of the Earth through the seismic wave, okay? So they use two types of seismic wave, 
that travels through Earth. We have the P wave and S wave. So what is P wave? P waves are longitudinal wave and they are relatively uh, faster than the S wave. So S wave is much slower and S wave move in a transverse wave. So through the this two seismic wave, we can clearly understand the density, mineral composition, temperature, and thickness of the layer of Earth. So the first layer of Earth is crust. Okay? We all know crust uh, consists up to 5 to 70 kilometers. And we have this little spear. So the little spear are, consists of Little sphere or consists of the uh, oceanic and continental crust. So, oceanic crust, okay, uh, it is the crust that lies beneath the ocean floors. Uh, it is about 5 to 10 kilometer thick, and on the other hand, is the continental crust. Uh, the continental crust makes of the continent up to about 15 to 70 kilometer thick. So once the oceanic and continental crust meet together, uh, the oceanic crust always subduct and create trenches. And then the continental crust are creating volcanoes. So the crust is commonly composed of uh, different elements. Okay? So we have oxygen silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. But the major composition of the crust is silicate materials. Okay? So just above the mantle are still part of the crust. So we have this thin layer known as Mohorovisic discontinuity. So it is a thin layer that serves as the boundaries between the crust and then the mantle. So the discontinuity line was discovered by a Croatian seismologist uh, named uh, Andrija Mohorovicic. Okay, so while uh, he discovered it while studying the seismic wave in Croatia. So that is the mantle. So uh, the crust. Uh, this is the part of the geosphere where living things, uh, plants, animals can live and thrive. And then after that, we have the mantle. Okay, so mantle, which lies just below the crust, is made up of silicate rocks. Okay, um, these silicate rocks are rich in magnesium and iron. So if the crust is the thinnest layer of the earth, mantle is said to be the thickest layer of the earth. Okay, so it is about 2,900 kilometer thick. So as we go deeper, the mantle, the temperature increases, okay, because we are closer to the core of the Earth. So the uh, mantle, okay, so here in the mantle, uh, it is divided into two, the upper and then the lower mantle. So in the upper mantle, we have this asthenosphere, okay? So if we go back to, okay, to previous slide, we have beneath the little sphere, is the asthenosphere. So what is the purpose of asthenosphere? Asthenosphere is a soft layer of the earth wherein the magma reservoir can be found. So here, uh, it shows the convection current wherein it explains the simple thermodynamics wherein the cold temperature, which are more dense, goes down. And then once it go down, it go deeper, it become hotter, and then the hot temperature rise up. So once the uh, hot temperature rise up, it goes back uh, from the, uh, yeah, it 
go back from the lowest or highest part of the mantle and then it continues the convection current within the mantle. So this mechanism, okay, or this mechanism of movement is the explanation for the plate tectonic, okay? So plate tectonic theory propose that the little sphere uh, above the asthenus sphere is divided into a major plate and some smaller plate that is resting on this a soft rocks okay, or liquid rocks known as asthenosphere that cause it for motion or movement. That's why from the Pangaea or the supercontinent na inintroduced ni Alfred Wegener, it broke gradually and drift to their uh, to their present position wherein we all know they created the, the different continent of the earth. So the asthenosphere is the reason why the Pangaea are uh, drifted apart and then broke apart because it lies beneath or the little sphere lies beneath the asthenosphere or known as the uh, soft or liquid rocks. Okay, so it is caused by the convection current. Next, okay. Next, we have the core. Okay, so core is divided into two parts: the inner and then the outer core. The the core is made up of mostly iron and nickel, which makes the earth like a giant magnet. Okay, so here in the core. Uh, it is the origin of the electromagnetic field of the Earth because it is made up of iron and nickel. So core has a radius of 3,400 kilometer. And that is described to be the innermost part of or layer of the Earth. Okay. So other than that, the core is the internal heat source okay, of the Earth wherein it contains the radioactive materials, okay? So, the layer or a line that divides the inner and outer core is called Lehman discontinuity. So, it was discovered by Inge Lehman. Inge Lehman. Okay? So, the next subsystem is the hydrosphere. So, again, hydrosphere Spear came from two Greek word hydro and spear. So hydro, uh, Greek word for water. So it means water. So hydrosphere encompasses all the materials or water, all of the water found in earth, uh, water on the surface or on the ground. So. Uh, water covers about 70% of Earth's surface, and it is the water that makes up the ocean. So, the Earth, most of the part of Earth or surface of the Earth is made up of water or covered with water. Okay? The water is very important in the existence of life, okay? Among the properties of water that makes it vital, uh, it is a universal solvent. It supports life because without water, there will be no life here on Earth. So the very cell of a living organism uh, need water. Okay, so many there are many reasons why water is important, but uh, for the existence of life, uh, it is always associated. Okay, so the hydrosphere uh, encompasses all of the forms of water. It could be in solid, liquid, or in gas form. 
that's why Earth is known as the blue planet because of its surface is mostly made up of water. Okay, so the water for it to uh, to sustain life, it continuously moving within the Earth. Okay, so it is known as the hydrological cycle or known as the water cycle. So the movement of the water within the earth sustain life. Okay, so the easiest place to begin is the evaporation. We all know evaporation from elementary or junior high school. Evaporation is a process wherein the water it evaporates and then there we go to the condensation and precipitation, but we will discuss them more thoroughly, okay? Other than evaporation, condensation, and precipitation, there are also processes that includes or completes the hydrological cycle. So, um, we have the transpiration, okay? Transpiration, uh, it is the type of evaporation, but the water came from the trees, okay? And sublimation, uh, this process can be found in a higher altitude, wherein the water vapors uh, turn into a solid, okay? And the sublimation on the way other around from solid to gas vapor, okay? Okay, so this is a simple uh, illustration of water cycle. So let's discuss. So first process is the, let's say, ed the evaporation. So evaporation is one of the major process in the water cycle wherein it transfer water from the surface to the atmosphere. So evaporation, uh, it is a process where in the liquid state, it will become or transferred into gaseous state or gas state, so known as water vapor okay so here once the water vapor is in the atmosphere it can bind okay with other uh, particles in the atmosphere so the water vapor commonly create this condensation okay formation of cloud so the transition from the water vapor state to the liquid is called condensation so condensation may take place as soon as the air contains more water vapor so it receives a free water surface through evaporating and uh, the prevailing temperature so once uh, it cannot hold enough the mass or air masses it will proceed or it will release the water in the form of precipitation okay so precipitation uh, that is the water falls to the earth okay so precipitation some of the water can pass through the uh, some of the water pass through or go back directly to the ocean and some of them are uh, being part of the surface runoff, okay? It combined with the river water and other water are uh, absorbed by the soil and <clears throat> collected in this groundwater, okay? So in groundwater, they create a aquifers, okay? So how about those uh, water vapor that came or is present in the higher altitude there is the process called the sublimation and the sublimation so in this part of water cycle the water vapor or gas will directly convert into solid that is the sublimation and sub the sublimation is from the solid into gas vapor so uh, it can be only observed on the higher altitude. So this illustration shows the evapotranspiration. So when we say evapotranspiration, that is the 
uh, total evaporation that came from the ocean and then forest were in the transpiration. So that uh, completes the water cycle. Okay, so the water is divided into a several portion. Okay, not all of the water or the 70% of the Earth's surface are potable. So when we say potable, uh, it is readily or uh, safe to drink. So only 3% of the water can be considered safe for drinking. Okay, so some of them could be or can be found from the surface or ground water. So when we say surface water, uh, that is a water that can be found on the surface, mostly in the ocean, sea, and river, while the ground water can be found on beneath the surface of the earth, or known as the aquifers. Okay, so the seventy percent that we are talking about uh, that creates the blue planet is divided into two parts the salt water and then the fresh water the salt water are divided into four basin uh, namely pacific ocean atlantic ocean indian ocean and arctic ocean so that make up the 97 percent of the salt water and the remaining three percent is fresh water so uh, fresh water uh, can be found in groundwater, ice caps, and glaciers. They are the fresh water. So, this 3% are the word water to be considered as safe for drinking, but not all of them are safe. So, some of this 3% could be contaminated with chemical or biological. So, here, the groundwater consists of 30%. And then the ice cap, or most of the 3% of the fresh water, belong to ice cap and glacier. So they are frozen in uh, North and South Pole. So ice caps and glaciers. So within the groundwater, okay, we have the surface water. The surface water is divided into several portions. So we have swamps river and lakes okay so that's uh, the whole uh, distribution of water and then let's proceed to the atmosphere okay so atmosphere came from two greek words atmos means okay atmos means um gas okay Atmos means gas and sphere, uh, it refers to the shape of the earth or sphere. So atmosphere is the thin gaseous layer that envelops the earth. So these uh, layers of air or gas that envelops the earth is uh, the one that protects us from many uh, uh, cosmic events such as solar flare, uh, asteroids, or meteors, and then many more. So, the atmosphere make up the gases of Earth that extend outward about 10,000 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. So, yeah, these are the layers of the Earth. Uh, we have troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. So we're going to discuss them one by one. So the Earth at atmosphere composed of 78% nitrogen, 20% or 21% uh, oxygen. Uh, there are some traces of argon 1% and then other gases such as carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, hydrogen, nitrogenous oxide, xenon, ozone, iodine, carbon monoxide, and ammonia. 
So all of that are the traces of gases that can be found in the Earth atmosphere. So the lower altitude also have quantities of water before. So commonly it can be found in our troposphere. So the atmosphere we have today is very different from Earth's early atmosphere. So because of several events, the atmosphere of Earth changes from a very harsh into a suitable uh, atmosphere which can sustain life. So we have two components why the Earth atmosphere changed from a very harsh, okay, that mostly made up of a uh, product of volcanic eruption and then exposure of uh, UV rays. So the first event is the uh, radiation from the sun. So the radiation from the sun causes the water to split. So once the water split, hydrogen escapes into the outer space and oxygen accumulates on the atmosphere. So from this part, the Earth's atmosphere began to create its layer to protect the living things. And the second event that makes the composition of atmosphere shift okay, is the cyanobacteria. What is the cyanobacteria? Cyanobacteria are photosynthetic bacteria wherein they carry out photosynthesis. So the gases or carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide that is being produced by a, a violent eruption of volcano from the early formation of our Earth was converted into oxygen because uh, photosynthesis is a process of utilization of carbon dioxide, sunlight, to produce their own food, which is the bacteria or cyanobacteria, and release a byproduct, oxygen. So the formation or the split of water that causes the oxygen to create the atmosphere and then release hydrogen gases and then the, the photosynthetic organism known as cyanobacteria, the oxygen gas released during photosynthesis become the main source of our oxygen here on the atmosphere. So the development, evolution, and growth of life increases because of the quantity of oxygen in the atmosphere. So this cyanobacteria is only present in the ocean because uh, before, uh, life is not possible on land because it will be directly hit by ultraviolet rays, so they, the DNA will just be destroyed. Uh, unlike the ocean, so that is the very home of, or the very first home of life. So it harness the cyanobacteria and then this cyanobacteria in return uh, help to create the uh, suitable okay, uh, layers of earth. Okay? Since there was enough oxygen in the atmosphere, the ozone layer protects terrestrial life from ultraviolet radiation. So, thanks to this two event, the cyanobacteria and splitting of water molecule. Okay, so the very first layer of Earth is troposphere. So, troposphere is the lowest layer in our atmosphere. So. Uh, it contains 80 feet of the total mass of the atmosphere. So most of the water vapor present in the atmosphere or can be found in our uh, troposphere. So all of the weather associated with clouds type are, can be found in this layer. So the atmosphere extends from Earth's surface to an average height of 12 kilometer to 9 kilometer. So here in the atmosphere, as long as uh, once the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. So they are inversely proportional because as long as the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. At the same time, once the 
altitude increases, the air in the atmosphere or in the troposphere become thinner, okay? Because uh, the altitude become, uh, because the altitude increases and absorb less solar radiation. So uh, let's say the sunlight are more harsh and then spark once the once we increase the altitude in troposphere okay so here the air pressure drops and the temperature gets colder so as long as uh, as long as we climb higher in our troposphere so uh, before the next layer of the atmosphere we have a buffer zone okay so this buffer zone uh, is known as tropopause okay so student before i forgot uh in our geosphere we've discovered the layers of the earth uh, core mantle and crust even though uh there's still no person uh, successfully reached the center of the earth because of the use of seismic wave here uh, our scientists discovered that we, we have several types of atmosphere layer because of the temperature, because of the temperature and altitude. Okay, so once the temperature and altitude changes, we are referring to specific layers of the atmosphere. Even though, uh, if we see it in the sky, there is no imaginary line that separates those layers. They are uniform, okay? They're homologous in the uh, in the eyes of a uh, human, but uh, it in pertaining to the uh, if we pertain to the altitude, the composition of uh, gases, okay, and temperature, they are several layers. So the very first layer is what we call the troposphere. So after that is the stratosphere so stratosphere is just above our tropos, tropos, tropopos okay so it is the second lowest to our atmosphere so yes human can still go up here but they are limited okay so here atmosphere is the most important or one of the important is the ozone layer so ozone layer is made up of o3 <clears throat> it is not the similar oxygen we needed to breathe the human need o2 to breathe while the ozone layer is made up of o3 actually it is not uh, it is poisonous to human the o3 so o3 or the ozone uh, is a layer within the stratosphere that protects us from ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. So this uh, ozone layer converts the UV energy into heat, okay? Heat source, dito sa Earth. So it protects life here on Earth by absorbing the radiation. So here in stratosphere, okay. okay. Here in stratosphere, uh, it is where the jet planes can fly because there is less turbulence. Okay, so uh, jet plane prefers stratosphere because of uh, because of the turb less turbulence. Okay, and keeps them a smooth rides uh, unlike the troposphere there are several clouds formation so the weather the climate so it makes a bumpier ride in the uh, troposphere so speaking of the ozone layer ozone layer uh, is one of the reason or the depletion or thinning of our ozone layer is one of the reasons why the temperature of Earth increases because the ultraviolet rays are directly passing through 
directly entering our Earth. So what happened is uh, human created technology and one of the technology is the or the discovery of the chloro chlorofluorocarbon or known as CFC. The chlorofluorocarbon has once it was released in the atmosphere, it has the ability to break down the bond between O3. So once the O3 are, are being break down, the ozone layer uh, can have a holes or it can be thinner. So therefore, the ultraviolet rays can directly hit the uh, earth. So therefore, it can cause several or common skin cancer because UVA, UVB are the type of uh, radiation that the ozone layer can uh, absorb and, and turn it into a heat of the earth. But once the ozone layer are have holes or it is thinner, so it can directly uh, hit the earth. So just above the stratosphere, we have a buffer zone again, and it is known as stratopos. And then we have here the mesosphere, right? Mesosphere is above the uh, stratosphere. So it is it extends upward to a height about 85 kilometer. So the mesosphere is known as the coldest layer of our atmosphere. Okay. So back it. So why it is the coldest? Uh, because of the next layer. <laughs> uh, thermosphere is the layer of our atmosphere that absorbs okay, all of the heat. Okay. Uh, therefore, there is no heat remain in the mesosphere. That's why uh, it is become the coldest temperature. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so here, the layer with decreasing temperature altitude increases in the mesosphere. So it is the coldest region in the atmosphere. And it is the layer that protects Earth from meteoroids okay so most of the meteoroids that enter our atmosphere burn up due to the intense friction that builds within the air and meteoroid so the burning of meteoroid is seen on the earth as a shooting star or burning meteors so it creates a streak of light caused by a hot glowing gas burning from a meteoroid meteoroids okay so there are less chances that meteoroids uh, enter our earth but if the meteoroids can manage to reach the earth it is it is called meteorites okay so the temperature stops decreasing at the mesopause so mesopause is the buffer zone of our mesosphere before Okay, before we proceed to the uh, thermosphere, okay, and we have the thermosphere, okay, thermosphere is the second highest layer of the earth atmosphere, okay, and this is the hottest layer, why, because it absorbs the high solar heat, okay, so it uh, extends from the mesospore, uh, mesopause, at an altitude of 80 kilometer at the atmosphere at around 700 kilometer okay so here in the thermosphere the extreme heat causes the atmospheric particle to become electrically charged or ionized so making the radio wave possible to bounce off and recede beyond the horizon so uh, it is the reason why we can have uh, uh, signals Yes, because of the radio waves. Okay, so this layer has consists of highly ionized gas and it is caused by the 
ionosphere. So within the thermosphere, we have the ionosphere. So ionosphere is present with ionized gas formed when ultraviolet rays knock off electron from nitrogen and oxygen. We all know that the atmosphere of Earth is mostly composed of nitrogen and oxygen. So because of that, the ions in the atmosphere form a band of layers and that is known as the ionosphere. So the ionosphere has the ability to reflect radio waves back to the Earth. So that's why we can hear uh, signals, okay? we can text message, right? At the same time, the ionosphere uh, reflect radio wave. Also, it protects us from uh, solar flares. Okay, so what is solar flares? Uh, those are the radiation or solar flares that are released by the sun. So the Earth has a protective layer. Okay. And that is the thermosphere. So what happened? So what happened is, at the pole, the ion interacts with air molecule from the aurora. So aurora are colorful display of light, which called aurora borealis or northern lights, and aurora australis or southern lights, according to their location. So, um. Aurora or NIT or known as Aurora Borealis or Aurora Australis can only be found in the poles. Cannot be present in the tropical region or in the equator because the connection of ionosphere is related to the core or magnetic field released in the core of our Earth. So they help to they help they work together to help the earth from not uh for not being hit by a solar flare because once a living thing hit by a solar flare it will be uh nothing or it will be dead because the genetic material will be uh erased or let's say it will be destructed destroy okay so that is the importance of ionosphere within the thermosphere so once the solar flare uh, interacts with the ionosphere uh, the earth electromagnetic field uh, protect us and then at the end or the end product is the aurora borealis so there are several colors formed based on the particles or gases so it could change color so from nitrogen uh, it could be green uh, oxygen so different color of the aurora borealis is different uh, gases that interact with the uh, solar next okay okay uh, before that the last layer of our atmosphere which is not included in our powerpoint is the exosphere exosphere is the most or outermost layer of the earth and it extends to 700 kilometer and 2000 kilometer above sea level so most of the orbiting satellite can be found here in the exosphere and of course the earth's gravity ends with the exosphere the last subsystem of earth is the biosphere okay. biosphere came from the greek word means life bio means life so biosphere comprises of all living things. So it includes all microbes, plants, and animals. So it extends up to upper areas of the atmosphere and up to the deepest part of the ocean where we can find some bacteria. Okay. So 
It is the subsystem that comprises all living things, which include uh, living things that still not yet identified. Okay. <clears throat> so the origin of biosphere. Life on Earth was presumed to have begun around 3.8 or 3.9 billion years ago from a single primitive living creature or bacteria known as cyanobacteria. The cyanobacteria is, uh, it has a name, it's chromatolites. So it starts to evolve, okay? And there are still several theories or hypotheses that try to resolve where and how it started up to, build, up to this time. So there are many theories that emerge that attempt to explain the origin of life. But now, uh, we understand how life works, how all of the living things interact within each other. Okay? We are dependent in all of the components of the subsystem or biosphere. So here, the biosphere is where certain organism function to consume a different set of organism, allowing energy transfer. So it is important for the biosphere to transfer energy uh, to, to sustain life, okay? To sustain the flow of energy. So uh, there are certain materials to recycle in the process known as the food chain. So this food chain, okay, so this food chain, food web, okay, energy pyramid, they demonstrate how energy diminishes and acquired as one organism is eaten by one another. So it helps us to provide a variety or various uh, diversity of living organism, not just one species can favor okay, in the biosphere or so from the decompos decomposer to herbivores to carnivores to omnivores okay here in the biosphere we can see in the food web that living things cannot just live on their own they need the, the other subsystem of earth the crust on the geosphere the hydrosphere and then the atmosphere for them to show the food web or the existence of ecosystem wherein both living and non-living things interact to make a whole system work so the subsystem interacts within each other so matter and energy move and cycle between four different subsystems so this cycle makes life on earth possible so for example of this cycle is water cycle water moves between the different spheres so it absorbs release and transport energy around the world in its different form uh, in geosphere also same with that and the biosphere so biosphere uh, it shows the move of energy in the form of energy pyramid so as you can see here on our powerpoint presentation uh, we have the, the producer, they are the one that uses photosynthesis to create their own food and they will be eaten by the herbivores. So as long as the uh, organism uh, goes up in the food pyramid, the amount of energy are also decreases. So the remaining or the energy the energy decreases because the herbivores that eats the plant uses okay the other energy for its life or the existence of life of its own life and then once it was eaten by a carnivorous so only 10 percent okay and then once the carnivorous eaten by another carnivorous it also decreases so specifically just 10 percent okay of energy can be obtained by eating or consuming other organism and then the apex okay 
wherein we have the carnivorous. Okay. So that's the that's the subsystem of Earth. So for the summary, the subsystem of Earth are biosphere, uh, biosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere. So they interact together to sustain life. So if you have any questions, you can comment down to our uh, comment down to our video, and I will try to answer them. Okay, so you can also post some question regarding our topic in our GC. So that's all and goodbye.